Welcome to video 72 in series 3 and in this video I'll set up the enemy animator controller. Okay, so if you have a look at the golem at the moment, you can see that the animator has no controller assigned, so I need to make one. And while we're at it, just turn off apply root motion. And all that is is that the animation would drive the movement of the enemy, but instead I actually want to drive the movement using the nav mesh agent. So just turn that off and go to the uh, golem. Well, before we do that, just make a new folder and call that uh, my controller. Controllers, rather. Then go to the golem itself, and if you expand it, you can see all of these animation clips right there. Uh, so go to the golem, click on the main one itself, go to animations, and we need to set up the animation since this was made uh, way before Mechanim. It's actually very simple. Uh, all we need to do is to make sure that certain animations are in fact looping and baked in position. So loop time, you can see that it's green. It means that it's okay for looping. And I'll just bake all of these into position. In fact, actually, this animation won't move uh, the golem anywhere. Uh, but regardless, I'll just bake it into position anyway. Just a bit of a habit. And just hit apply. Okay, so that's the idle taken care of. I want to also use the walk animation. So select that again. I'll loop that one. And this one actually does move the model about, and we don't want that to happen. So bake it into pose in all the axes. And as you do that, you can see that uh, the velocity will go to zero. There we go. It's completely zero now. And uh, just uh, hit apply. Okay. Uh, next, I'll use the H punch animation, the high punch animation. And again, this one, uh, it doesn't need to loop, but I would like to uh, stop it moving the model. Uh, so I'll just bake it into pose and hit apply. Okay. And you can actually play it. You can preview it as well to see what it looks like. And then I'll use the faint animation when the enemy is struck. And uh, for that, uh, again, I don't need to loop it, but I will bake it. It actually doesn't move, so this one's fine too. But just out of habit, hit apply. Okay. So the animations are now set up. So these come with the model. They're made in a uh, 3D package. Uh, where you can actually make, where you can rig the model, and then you can actually make animations, or you can assign animations to the rig model, and then they're exported as some format, like uh, FBX or something that's recognizable by Unity, and when you import it, it comes with all those animations that were made. Okay, so next I need to make uh, the controller itself. So going back to my controllers, I do want to make a uh, new controller. So select animator controller here from the create menu and then give it a name like golem controller. Now you could use any model you feel like. You don't have to use the one I'm using, but I'm just using this because it's a nice example. Okay, so that's it. Uh, now we can have a look at it. Window animator. This is the one. And there we go. These are our states and we need to set up our animator controller. So the animations do nothing until we build a controller. So going back to the golem, drag in the relevant animations. Uh, so they are uh, H punch, which is the attack. And that's not the default. I mean, they're not the starting animation. Uh, walk as well. And uh, where was the other one? Uh, faint. That's the one I'm after. Okay, so idle is going to be the uh, default animation. So set as layer default state. Good, done. And we'll have a walk here. I'll just rename them as well while I'm at it. So I'll just change this to a capital idle. This one I'll change to a capital walk. And uh, this one here, H punch, I'll change that to attack. And this faint here, I'll change that. Why don't I increase the size of that so I can see what I'm doing and use middle mouse button to pan around. Okay. So just set these up a bit nicer. Okay, and faint is going to be struck. I will then uh, set up some transitions. So right click on the uh, state and say make transition. So I will go from idle to walking and walk to back to idle. I will also have any state. So you could be in any state and you will immediately jump to attack. 
and from attack, when you finish attack, go to idle. Also, any state you could be in, and the enemy is hit by something, so they're struck. So you can go to the struck state, and when you're finished with that, jump to idle. Okay, now I have to put in the conditions for what would cause the transition, okay? Uh, so that's the next thing that I need to do. So for transitioning from idle to walk, I want a new parameter. So click on the parameters tab here uh, and make a new boolean. This boolean is is pursuing. And yeah, try to spell that properly. Okay, good. Now coming back to the transition arrow, add a condition, is pursuing true, good. And again, another one, is pursuing, false. Also, while I'm at it, I'll just adjust this. I feel like it's a very long time. You have to wait to transition from idle to walk. Uh, so I'll actually just drag this back here and uh, just set this over like that. You can also set it here in the settings. Uh, so I could put the, uh, let me have a look at that, the exit time. So this, uh, this exit time here has a value between 0 and 1. And it's saying that this minimum portion percentage of the animation like idle has to have played before it can transition into walk. So for example, I could set that to 0.1. And that's saying 10% of idle must have played and then it can transition into walk. So same thing here. Uh, well, that was if I was using the exit time. But I think, I think it makes more sense since I already have a condition is pursuing. I shouldn't use a fixed exit time, a forced exit time on the animation. So that way we'll transition immediately. As soon as this is pursuing is set to true uh, by the animator script, the enemy animation script, it will immediately force the animation to go to walk. It'll blend immediately to walk and vice versa uh, if uh, it's coming from reverse. Okay. And, well, while I land it, just to make it look clean, let's do that. Just have it really, and then turn it off. I don't know, that's just what I do. <laughs> okay, so that's it for the walk. Now for the attack, I just wanted to have an exit time, so this is correct. I'm happy with that, 75%. So 75% of the attack animation must be completed before it can transition back to idle, before it can commence that. So I'm happy with this transition back to idle. Uh, same for this one. Uh, for the struck animation, that's fine, 80%, whatever, that's fine too. I don't mind that at all. Uh, now I need some triggers for actually going to the attack state and to the struck states. And uh, you can see there's a, a warning messages here. You must have either, it tells you here, they must have be a fixed exit time or a condition, one of the two. Otherwise, the transition is ignored. So just remember that. So I'll make a uh, new parameter here, and I will make that a trigger. It's different from bool, trigger, call that attack. And this is the condition now. So the condition is attack. So when this trigger is hit, immediately it'll jump to the attack animation, and that can be from any state. All right, now I'll make another parameter here, a trigger again. This one is struck. This one, assign it to this transition. And this is going to be the struck condition. Okay, so when this trigger is run, it'll run to the struck uh, animation state. And inside of that, you can see the animation is faint. And when it finishes playing, at least 80% of it, it'll start to transition back to idle. All right, so that's all good. So it's always a good idea to just click on everything. Make sure that there are no uh, problems with any of the transitions. Just double check them. And if it's all good, just save it. And it's time to actually apply it. So go back. And, well, I already did that, so it's all good. And you can double-click it to just go to the animator uh, panel quickly. Okay, so if I hit play now, just bring that up. If I hit play now, it should be in the idle animation to begin with. You can see there, the uh, enemy is in fact in the idle animation. It's a very gentle animation, you can hardly see it, but if you look at the arms carefully, you can see that it's moving. And you can also go to the animator window, select the golem, and then go to the animator window, and you can see here that it is in fact animating. Okay, so that's pretty good. And you can also, uh, if I recall correctly, except you have to just put it to like this. Yep, yeah, you can actually test it like that. You can turn it on in the scene in the in the animator, and you can now see it actually walking. 
you can turn it off. Okay, it stops. It's working nice. Attack. There we go. That was the trigger. I hit struck. Perfect. So it's working perfectly. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and keep on moving onwards.